You will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write all your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one on page two of your question booklet. Section one. You will hear two friends called John and Anna talking about a holiday Anna has just had on Jackson Island. First, you have some time to look at questions one to seven on page two. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi, Anna. How was your holiday to Jackson Island? It was good. There's quite a lot to see. It's quite a big island, really. Yeah. I was thinking of going in the summer. So where would you recommend going on the island? Well, the capital, of course, Camford. I stayed there with my cousin. Anna stayed with her cousin, so cousin has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Hi, Anna. How was your holiday to Jackson Island? It was good. There's quite a lot to see. It's quite a big island, really. Yeah. I was thinking of going in the summer, so where would you recommend going on the island? Well, the capital, of course, Camford. I stayed there with my cousin. What did you do there? Well, actually, I spent most of my time there shopping. So has it got good shopping centres? Yes, but they're the same as at home, really. So I did all my shopping in the market, which is great. Hmm. What kinds of things are good to buy there? Everything. But bags and shoes, especially. <laughs> Just make sure you've got cash with you, as most of the stalls don't take credit cards. Okay, that's good to know. Where else did you go? Well, my cousin and I went to Newtown.、Mm. She said it was famous for its modern architecture. We only had half a day there, so we took a bus tour around the town. But if I were you, I'd give the bus tour a miss.、Mm. Unless you know a lot about architecture, the buildings all look the same. There's a museum, though. That's supposed to be good. You might like that. Okay, I'll give it a go. Then after that, we headed for Golden Beach because we were going to meet up with an old friend that I hadn't seen for years. But we had to stay in a caravan as the hotels were all booked up. <laughs> Is it as pretty as it looks in the brochures? Yes, it's very picturesque. We did some sailing on the most beautiful blue sea. It was so clear that you could see the bottom, even quite far out to sea. That part of the trip was great, and I'd have liked to have stayed even longer. I'd suggest staying there for a minimum of four days if I were you.、Mm -hmm. We had two days there, and it wasn't nearly enough. Sounds great. I'll put that on my must-do list.、Mm. Was that the end of your trip? No. After Golden Beach, we drove into the center of the island to White Mountain. White, as in the color? Yes. The island's great because you can go from the beaches up to the snowy mountain in a couple of hours.、Mm. We took a tent because we were going to camp, but the weather was so cold. In fact, it was snowing when I was there that we stopped in a motel instead. Did you go skiing then? No, but we tried snowboarding, and it was harder than it looked. <laughs> it looks so easy when you see other people doing it, but it took me ages to get the hang of it. I wish I'd had some lessons. But you had to make your bookings in advance. Okay, I'll look into that. Thanks. 
Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10 on page 2. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. So are there any other tips or advice you could give me? I don't know. Let me think. Oh, one place you should try to visit is this very quaint cafe, which is at the foot of the mountain. It has the best cakes ever. It's worth going there just for them. Mm, I'll have to try those. <laughs> so what other advice would you give? Oh, let me think. Uh, we didn't really have any problems. Well, how did you get around when you were there? We wanted to get a motorbike at first. They're very cheap to hire and great fun to ride as the roads are very good. But it turned out not to be a good idea because the weather is so changeable. Mm. You'd be much better off in a car. There are plenty of places where you can hire them and the roads are well signposted so you won't get lost. And presumably I can get a map when I get there? Well, you can, but they are expensive. It'd be better to get one here before you go. Great. That's been really useful. Thank you. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2 on page 3. Section 2. You will hear an art center director giving information to a group of people attending an arts weekend. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15 on page 3. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Welcome to Grampic Arts Campus for our annual Residential Arts Weekend. I'm Bob Grain, Director of the Programme. It's a large campus, it's quite easy to get lost, so I'm going to give you a quick overview of the most important places here. Right, I'm glad you all found your way here to reception. First, a word about parking. We do have a free temporary car park here. And for those of you coming by bike, the bike sheds aren't far from reception. You'll see them on your left as you walk down South Lane towards the residential rooms. Now, dinner is in the dining room at 7.30. If you need something to eat now, the snack shop is still open. The quickest way to get there is to leave here Go straight through the office, they won't mind. The ornamental ponds in front of you and the snack shop is the building on your left. The fitness facilities are even better this year. We've outgrown the old fitness rooms, which were next to the office. To find the new fitness rooms from here, walk up to North Road. They're at the end in the last block next to the dining room. Now, your bedrooms are quite near. You can see the single rooms in the tall block to the far left of us across South Lane. Couples and families are in our family rooms, right next door to them. I'm afraid there aren't any TVs in the rooms. We ask you to keep the noise down, please. We have a TV room. You can probably see it from here. It's right opposite us in the big red building. Before you hear the rest of the information, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20 on page 4.
but there are gaps in our timetables for some extra options. You may have this information in your brochure, but there have been some changes. Firstly, the drama option. I'm afraid our theatre and practice rooms here are being refurbished and are out of use. We decided against using our sports hall, and instead we're going to use our lecture rooms, which we've converted into a theatre for the weekend. There are also changes to the photography option. This year, this option isn't open to everyone. We decided for practical reasons to reserve it for beginners with no previous experience. Let me remind you that you don't need any special equipment. That's provided. The tutors have said that unfortunately they can't accept parents with children because that proved too disruptive last time. But if you're over 18, that's fine. On to the writing option. Previous courses looked at starting your novel. This year, we wondered about focusing on the techniques of writing different types of poetry. However, as a result of many requests, we've decided the workshop will concentrate on helping each participant write one or more short stories. Poetry may be some future time. Now, music. The brochure says you'll go to a concert. That's a misprint. Instead, you'll be writing and putting on your own performance, a concert for yourselves. Unfortunately, the singing tutor is ill. It's too late to replace her, so we've had to cancel singing lessons. Apologies for that. Finally, the creche. This is available for all families on the programme, and there are still some places left. I'm sure you'll be pleased to know that the charge for this hasn't increased since last year. Lunch is included, but of course parents are welcome to collect their children and spend the lunch break with them. May I remind you that any fees for this service must be settled in full at the end of the last day. So, has anybody got any questions? That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3 on page 5. Section 3. You will hear two students called Josh and Emily discussing an assignment on applying scientific techniques to art. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24 on page 5. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Hi, Emily. Hi, Josh. Are you ready to work on the assignment? Yeah. Now, we need to describe how modern scientific techniques are being used in the field of art history. Right. And Dr Abbott suggested that we choose some famous cases to illustrate the argument. OK. So what have you found? Well, there's a Canadian forensic scientist called Biro. Yes, I think I've heard of him. What do you know about him? Well, I'm a big fan of Jackson Pollock. The modern American artist? Mm. Didn't he paint those really huge abstract paintings? <laughs> That's him. I guess it would be pretty easy to fake one of those paintings. No way, Emily. I know a lot of people think that even a child could paint one. To the untrained eye, they might look simple. But they're incredibly intricate works of art. Well, sorry, but 
I really can't agree with you. Anyway, what did Biro find out? Well, Biro worked on a case where a client asked him to prove that a painting she bought for only five dollars was an authentic Jackson Pollock. So was it a fake? Well, Biro found evidence to show it was a genuine Pollock, but the art world didn't accept his findings. Why? Well, one critic said that compared to other Pollocks, the white and yellow lines on the painting were too straight. Come on, Josh. That doesn't seem that convincing. No, you're right. It is a bit weak. But the strongest argument was that there were no records of previous owners. For the painting to be authentic, you really should be able to trace the painting all the way back to the artist's studio. Well, that's true, I suppose. Did they consult with anyone else?、Mm. The International Foundation for Art Research got involved. And what was their verdict? Well, they saw a definite similarity in the painting techniques used. You mean the way Pollock dripped the oils on the canvas? Yeah, and they noted the dirt and paint marks on the back, which all of Pollock's paintings have. Why is that? He used to lie his canvases down on the ground when he painted them. But the foundation were worried about the acrylic paint that was used on the painting. It's quite common now, but it was very unusual back in Pollock's day. So it was probably painted much later. Right. So whose side are we on in this argument? When it comes to art, you can see the art critic's point. If their knowledge and expertise tells them that it definitely isn't a Pollock painting, shouldn't we believe them? I mean, that is usually how it works in the art world, isn't it? Art historians have always judged paintings, but things are changing now. If we have modern scientific techniques like fingerprint analysis, why not use them?、Mm, that's true. Well, maybe we need a combination. I think you're right. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions twenty-five to thirty on page six. Now listen and answer questions twenty-five to thirty. So, did you find out anything else, Josh? Well, have you ever heard of a painting called the Battle of Anghiari? I have actually. It's the lost masterpiece by Leonardo da Vinci, the famous Italian artist. What about it? Well, an Italian art analyst called Serracini thinks he knows where it is. And he's using scientific techniques to help locate it. How? Well, art historians knew where the painting was last seen. That's right, in the Hall of the Five Hundred in Florence. Right. So Serracini had a theory that the painting was still there, and he set out to prove it. He used a lot of different technology, like radar and thermographic cameras. But initially, he scanned every inch of the hall with a laser. In order to make a really accurate three D model of the building's design, did he think the painting was hidden in the building somewhere? Exactly. Then, to find out what the hall looked like in Leonardo's time, he took pictures of it with a thermographic camera. Couldn't he have used ultrasound to do that? Not really. Different types of building materials produce different amounts of radiation, and you can really see those differences in a thermal image. So. Brick would look different from wood or glass, for example. Yes, Serracini worked out what the building looked like when it was first built, and what renovations took place after that. He found that two large glass windows on the east wall had been removed and filled in by the time Da Vinci started work on his painting, leaving a space big enough for it. But why hasn't the painting been seen for four hundred years?、Mm -hmm. To answer that question, Serracini needed to study that wall even more closely. 
Did he use the thermographic camera again? No, this time he used another kind of technology, radar. And what did that show? It showed there were in fact two walls there, an older one and a newer one built in front of it. So does Serracini believe that da Vinci's painting is on the concealed wall? Yes, on a stone wall concealed by the newer brick wall. So, what's the next stage in the investigation? Well, he isn't allowed to remove any plaster or bricks, so he's now experimenting with a gamma ray camera to try and verify his theory. Well, I think we've got some really strong examples there of how science can help art. Let's see if we can type up an outline. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4 on page 7. Section 4. You will hear a lecturer talking on the topic of sustainability. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40 on page 7. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. This week's lecture on a scientific topic of current general interest is on sustainability. The term sustainability is not new. It was first coined in 1987 in a report for the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development. Since then, however, the term has been applied to everything from cars to agriculture and even economics. My specific focus, in fact, derives from this problem. I want to analyze what seems to me to be the confusion that surrounds sustainability. That UN document defines sustainable development as development that allows both the present and all future generations to meet their needs. Here is the first myth. Sustainability is not simply about the environment, which may come as a surprise to you. In fact, the original definition says nothing about it at all. Sustainability is not about protecting the world around us. The original focus was on finding ways to help poor nations catch up with richer nations, which primarily meant giving them similar rights to natural resources, water, food, energy, the things that many of us take for granted. The consequence and ultimate goal was improving living standards for all. Another myth is that sustainability is a synonym for green, as in green movement, green products, etc., although there is some overlap between the terms. Green suggests a preference for natural living, for example, when you go shopping, Products marketed as green imply the absence of high technology and mass manufacturing processes. Those groups who campaign for sustainability, we can call them the lobby for sustainability, acknowledge that the situation is desperate. The main problem, they state correctly, is time. With six billion people on the planet now, 
and a billion more expected in the next 30 years. Only technology will be able to provide everyone with an acceptable and safe lifestyle. Electric cars, wind turbines, and solar cells are key examples of this. They make great use of renewable resources while emitting fewer noxious chemicals. Nuclear power, too, is something the sustainability lobby has come to accept, unlike most Greens. And here's the third myth. It concerns the role of technology. Technology is not rejected as evil, but we should not overemphasize the role of technology either. Take electric cars, for example. Researchers are currently working on plans to electrify the world's car fleet. New technology is currently being developed to make better batteries, giving longer performance. But a better way of thinking is perhaps to have battery stations for drivers to use on roads. When the battery is getting low, they simply swap the old one for a fully charged one. In other words, new business thinking, not new technology, for a sustainable future. There are similarities in agriculture, where knowledge can be more productive than new technology. Agriculture uses up about three-quarters of the world's water. Some crops are very thirsty and require a lot of water. So many farmers who believe in sustainability are now planting crops like sunflowers and wheat instead of corn, which are happy with much less water. In terms of water consumption, one of the biggest problems is that our diet is changing. As countries develop and people become richer, they aspire to a diet with more meat. Now, admittedly, most of the new births that will take our population to over 6 billion are going to be born in countries with largely vegetarian diets. However, most of them will be born in the city, and this is where water consumption is highest. That introduces the topic for next week's lecture, and we will be discussing... That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.